research says that after 17 minutes, the brain gets a signal when the body is at rest. So if you're sitting in your desk for 17 minutes, the brain says, oh, I'm sleeping or I'm close to rest. So the heart rate starts to slow. When the heart rate is slowed, then obviously the oxygen to the brain is starting to decrease. As the, When the heart rate is slower, it's pumping less oxygen. So that happens after 17 minutes. We're in a class period for 90 minutes a day. So we basically take brain breaks every two to three times a class period. And they can be legitimate games or they are just a transition that occurs within a class period. Um, so some ELA teachers build in, um, you know, how they pass out papers or where they have to go to get something. So everyone is moving. That's fine because the minute you stand up, you incre increase blood flow by about 11%. So that is a brain break. Or you can take what you're, the content that you're learning and turn it into a game. Or just break for a two-minute silent ball game so the kids aren't talking, but they're throwing, catching, kind of crossing the midline of the body, using the right and the left side of the brain to do an activity. Happens in about two to three minutes. And then we sit down. That I want them to know that um, you know, getting the blood circulating and, and waking children up is exactly what we need to do. When teachers come down to me and say Johnny keeps falling asleep in class, um, we look at his home life and, and what's wrong and what could be causing the problem. But I also tell the teachers that you know, are you keeping them actively engaged? Mm -hmm. Are they getting up and moving around enough to to keep Johnny awake? Mm -hmm. We've known for years that, that uh, if you, you, know, you can have mass versus distributive practice, and if you mass it for, for too long, you get diminishing returns, and eventually you get virtually nothing. So let's say you have a, if you have four hours to work and you work on that whole thing four hours, you're going to get less than if you work on it two and a half hours and take a break in there, and it's, 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 it has to do with how much resistance builds up over time, and as the resistance builds up, and the, and the uh, interference, uh, negative transfer builds up from the stuff you've already learned, uh, it won't stick anymore. But if you take a break, that that interference goes away, that that work in inhibition goes away, and you're ready to go again. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's a you can it, it's a curve that either either has inhibition going up and and, and interference uh, going up and performance going down or it has a series of peaks and valleys where you, you push hopefully not to the point where you have uh, a lot of inhibition and a lot of interference. Uh, uh, the, uh, the idea of a break is a good thing. Now there are some things, you know, we also talk about whole and part, and there are some things that need to be dealt with in a chunk. I mean, if you break it apart, it wouldn't make any sense at all, but it doesn't mean you have to work at it all that, all that hard. Mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, but to understand it, you have to see the whole formula, you have to see the whole whatever it is.